Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel. I'm coming to you from Chicago, as usual. And today, I got a wild one. It was sent to me in Discord. I'm not going to say who it is because I'm not, I'm not sure that they want me to. But it's a really interesting video. I think it sped up a little bit. Uh, the source where I got it, it just is sped up a little bit, but it works. You can totally hear it and understand. It's it's a crazy one. I uh, as, as some of you may know, I've been doing a lot of uh, Amber Heard stuff, and I know some people are not into that. Uh, so I just wanted I just wanted to do a live stream. I, honestly, I needed I needed some uh, alone time with my chat. I, I'm not going to lie to you, that, that was really my thought process. <laughs> So let's get this party started. It's a wild one. You see, you see the title. By the way, it was just a good clip that was sent to me. I, I don't have any any knowledge of this uh, area of of life whatsoever. But but we'll, let's let's get into it and and see where it goes. This, which will be um, the witness out of order by agreement of the parties and the attorneys. Ms. Parker, go right ahead. Your Honor, call Sharon Lee. Sharon Lynn Lee. Hi. Uh, Ms. Lee? Good yes. morning. Good morning to you. Uh, Ma'am, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this case? I do, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Parker. Thank you, Your Honor. And ma'am, will you please state your name for the judge? It's Sherlyn Lane. And are you a licensed professional, professional counselor? Yes, I am a licensed professional, a marriage and family therapist. And how long have you been doing that? Um, about nine years. Okay. And have you been providing individual therapy to an individual known as Jordan Bird? Yes, I have. And how long do you, have you been providing therapy to Ms. Bird? Um, I believe I started working with her back in June of last year. So, so almost a year. A year? Okay. And how often do you see Ms. Bird? Once a week. Okay. For about an hour? Or Yes, once a week for about 50 minutes. From April of 2022 to June of 2022, has Ms. Bird been consistent with her therapy appointments? No, she uh, she starts start seeing uh, inconsistency with her. Okay, I believe she's missed about four appointments. Hey, I, I, I hope you guys can hear that okay. I know it's a little fast, but it, like I said, I think it actually works and makes the clip go better. It, this is fascinating to me. I, I Again, like I said, I have no personal experience with this. I don't know anything about it. Um, but I, I will say this. I'll just out myself right here. I'm completely uncomfortable with it. I'm, I'm looking at this going, what, what, what? this is insane. That, that's my thought. I mean, people are free to do what they want to do, um, but you'll see the problems it causes. And it just it just makes no sense to me from from you know, I guess I'm just an old traditional guy. And uh, I, I, you know, think, you know, be married or, or, or don't be married. That's it. Those are the options. It's binary in my world. Uh, that doesn't mean it has to be for everyone else. That's just where I'm at. Uh, the, the guy, the the attorney ad litem, kind of sees it the same way I do. But uh, I'll be interested to see what you what you guys think of this. Um, I believe yes. It's been about but four. Prior to April of 2022, Miss Bird was more consistent with her appointments. Definitely, she was. Okay. And um, now you're contracted with the department to provide therapy. Is that correct? Yes, I am. And part of the contract states that once a month you send therapy notes to the caseworker. Yes. By the way, yes, I did watch Sister Wives, and, and I had the same re reaction. <laughs> it was a few years ago. I'm like, I, I can't deal with this. I just can't deal with this. What's it, th There's two things. Part of it, I think, is funny. There, there, there are a couple of funny moments, but I don't think it's all hilarious. Um, and then uh, the other part, I think, is just fascinating at how everybody deals with this, how the system approaches this, and and how honest and professional and upfront. I'm, I'm actually really impressed from the therapist to the judge to the attorneys to everyone involved is that's just my reaction to it and that's what you've consistently done in this case try to yes <laughs> and your last notes are from uh let's see you sent to miss uh the caseworker on june 1st is that correct okay yes okay. um in those notes from june 1st you stated okay. that you felt that miss bird has regressed is that correct yes i do Okay. Would you agree with me that Jordan kinds of go up and down? Like she does really, really that well is, for a while, is, and then she kind of falls off. Yes, that's she has peaks and valleys. Okay. Y'all, please speak one at a time. Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. And right. Uh, sorry, I, I'll stop interrupting. But Kevin, that's another good question. I don't know where this court is. It, lo it looks like Gordon Adams is the judge. I, I only see that now. I don't know where it is. I, I don't know where it is at all. If anyone, if anyone knows. 
this call or is familiar with it, put it in the chat. I mean, it was sent. It was sent to me by by, by one of y'all. I, I, <laughs> now, would you agree that Miss Bird is in one of those valleys? Yes, I will say so. Now, prior to June of 2022, uh, Miss Bird was employed, correct? Prior to June of 2022, yes, she was employed. Okay. And is it your understanding that Miss Bird is now unemployed? Yes, it is my understanding. Do you know why she's unemployed suddenly? Um, I can not. I don't know exactly why she's unemployed suddenly. Um, I cannot remember recall what was the reason she said she stopped working at this past job, but she's currently. She did say she's currently looking for work. Okay. Um, and has she had any offers for employment? She did have one offer for employment, but she said she turned it down because um, it required weekend work. Okay. Um, so would you agree right now she's unemployed by choice? Yes. Okay. And prior to June of 2022, Ms. Bird had her own apartment. Is that right? She did. Okay. Uh, but now she currently does not have an apartment of her own? She does not. Okay. Do you know what happened to the apartment she was residing in? Well, she told me back in April, May time frame that she had gotten approved for uh, some apartments in Belton and she was going to be moving out at the end of the month, at the end of May, I believe it was, or within a couple of weeks, she was supposed to have moved into her own apartment. So that's why she, I felt like she was transitioning from that place while she was waiting for the one in Belton to become available. Okay. Do you know where she's currently staying at? I'm not sure, to be honest. I, I think she floats between her mom's house and, and some, um, a couple that she's in a relationship with that she told me she floats back and forth between there. Okay. Now, in April, according to your notes, in April of 2022, Ms. Bird said she had a boyfriend, but then broke up with that boyfriend? She had a boyfriend, yes, and broke up with him, yes. And so then in May of 2022, she's now in a polyamorous relationship with this couple that she sometimes stays with? Yes. Okay. And um, is it my understanding that Ms. Bird is the submissive to the dominant male in that oh, relationship? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's the understanding, yes. Okay. Meaning that he controls her life? control her life. I, there's certain issues of her life that I feel that he does control. He's a great <laughs> <laughs> and what, pray tell, what area, but do, do tell, what, what area of life do, does he control? <laughs> I'm sorry, this is too good to, to hear this. The, the attorney's uncomfortable with it, but in this straight lace court, this discussion, it's, it's delicious that this man gets to tell her what to do? Pretty much. I, that was my understanding. Okay. And you know, it's indicate that you're concerned that Ms. Bird is back in this type of relationship. Yes, that is a concern of mine. Okay. And um, you said she sometimes lives with her mother. Is that right? What, the way she explained it to me last time I met with her is that she checks in on her uh, from time to time because of her uh, vertigo. Okay. So for the most part, Jordan's staying with this couple in their home. That's, that's my understanding, yes. Okay. And you understand from the caseworker that this is not an approved home? Yes. Okay. Now, your notes indicate that Jordan struggles to balance her relationship with being a parent. Is that right? Yes. Has that been a problem for Jordan for the one year that you've seen Jordan? No. At one point, I believe she was doing well with it. Now, she has some ups and downs and she there are times when uh, she needs she she is off balance and we've, we've been working on decision making and so there are times that i have seen that behavior but right now it's more than more than you know previously okay. yes she does you know, back in april the department had approved jordan to start getting unsupervised parent child visits to include overnight visits yes and this was back when jordan was employed and had her own apartment right yes okay but now she's unemployed and living with this couple that she has a polyamorous relationship with yes okay and um has jordan acknowledged to you that the children have actually spent the night in this house with this couple yes okay. and when jordan and her children are staying with this couple where does jordan sleep jordan sleeps in the bedroom with the couple okay and where do her children sleep they were sleeping on the sofa alone and that's where it ceases to be funny. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to get too over dramatic about it, but here's the problem, and this is why nobody's comfortable with it, least of all me. Now, there was someone in that incident, in that, that time when the kids were over there, she told me there was a, a female that was sleeping on the sofa as well. 
and her children were on a, on the couch. And then uh, later on, uh, a man returned to the home and he slept on the sofa, but she was awake during that time, she said. Okay. So Jordan's in a home that's not approved by the department, correct? Yes. With individuals that are not approved by the department, correct? Yes. And while she slept in another room, her children slept with these other people out in the living room that were not approved by the department. Yes. Okay. Would you agree with me? That probably wasn't the best decision for Jordan to make. Yes, I do agree. Um, were you aware that prior to Jordan getting unsupervised visits, so the department put a safety plan into place? Yes. And were you aware that a safety plan stated that the children could not be around any males? Yes. And you would agree with me that if Jordan had these children in a home that wasn't approved with people who weren't approved, she has violated that safety plan. I would say so. Does Jordan understand that she's at fault for violating the safety plan? <laughs> you, you have to wait till the end for that. That's probably my favorite part of the whole video, the Ed Lightham's reaction at the end. And, and, and he's just, he speaks for me. I believe that Jordan feels that her decision to do so was justified. So in, in that moment, she felt like that was the best thing for her to do. She felt like that was, she was being a protective parent at that point because there was something that was going on in her apartment. So does she recognize that it's the right thing? I believe she still feels that it was the right, that she made the right decision. Okay. Even though she violated the safety. Plan. Even though she, yes, I feel like she thinks it's justified. Even though she did not tell the department where the children were spending the night. I believe Jordan said she told the department. Before or after the department found out already? Um, I believe she said that she had sent some pictures beforehand to let uh, to let uh, her caseworker know where she was staying. I believe that's what she told me, that she did let somebody know, let uh, Misty know where she was. Okay. Did Jordan explain to you why she couldn't go to her mother's house with the children rather than to this polyamorous couple that she's in a relationship with? Mm -hmm. She said she did not have any clothing for the children at her mom's house, and she didn't have a place for them to sleep. Okay. So she felt the best place for the children to sleep was on a couch with strangers. I guess so. Does Jordan understand why the Department of Family Protective Service would think that was a bad idea? Does she understand? Uh, I would. We discuss Objection, Your Honor. I'm going to say this calls for speculation. I don't think she yeah, knows what. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> uh, does Jordan um, appreciate why the department put a safety plan in place? She knows that there are concerns for her children's safety, and she knows that uh, based on previous her previous cases that there there are it's necessary to have a safety plan in place. Does Jordan agree that having the children around males that aren't appropriate is bad parenting? Does she agree? Probably not. Okay. No. Um, so do you think that Jordan has taken accountability for her violating the safety plan? No, I do not think she's taken accountability. Do you think Jordan is? I'm sorry, go ahead, ma'am. I said, no, she does. That was, that's one thing that I try to, I struggle with Jordan is to take accountability for her actions. Would you agree that when Jordan does something that's wrong, she tends to blame other people? Yes, definitely. <laughs> And so accountability is something that you're still working on with Jordan? Yes. Okay. And it's been a year? Yes. Okay. Um, does Jordan understand why the department moved her visits back to the department, being supervised by the department? She knows that the, um, the decision to bring the children to this couple's home is a reason. And she's also believing that the reason that the children were removed was because in her, it was false falsehoods were being told against her, were being told that the children weren't safe. And so she doesn't agree with the reasons that were given. Okay. Um, do you think Jordan understands that having children sleep with strangers is not protective parenting? <laughs> Does she understand that's not protective parenting? After we discussed it and I laid it out for her, what, what that looks like. <laughs> to say that she understands, she understands, she understands, I believe she understands that it's wrong, but still there's justification. 
Okay. So no matter what Jordan does, would you agree she's just going to justify it in her head? Don't worry. This gets worse. There are more kids. Yes. And that may put the children at risk. Yes. Do you have an opinion as to whether or not Jordan should get a monetary return of those two children today? And not, I would say that Jordan would probably have to show a little bit more stability, like start on her upward climb towards um, when she, when I agreed for her to have unsupervised before she, she had three things working in her favor and she outlined those three things herself was that she had a job, she had a home and she had a vehicle. So those were the three things that were working in her favor, which she advocated for herself. So those three things, I, I don't see those three things anymore. So what was working in her favor, you know, initially to grant her to unsupervise, they're, they're not there anymore. So I would see, it would be my opinion, she would have to show a little bit more stability and independence in her thinking, knowing that she can make decisions on her own. Um, so you're not recommending unsupervised parent-child visits today? Thank you. I would not. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Fowler. Ms. Bird, you've heard the testimony of Ms. Lane, um, and I'm sure you have some disagreements with that testimony. Is that is that a true statement? Yes, ma'am. Um, when you figured out that your apartment did not have electricity due to the electrical fire, um, did you try and get in contact with Misty? I told her about it because it didn't happen until after I picked the kids up, yes. So when did you pick the kids up? I picked them up Friday, that Friday, about, I want to say it was about one-ish from the daycare. And what time did you figure out that your apartment didn't have any electricity due to the electric fire? It was later that evening. Okay. And when did you contact uh, Miss Dietz and let her know that you wouldn't be staying there? That same day. How did you contact her? Text or phone? I texted her. Okay. And so um, if we needed proof, we could just screenshot your phone and show that you did text Miss Dietz on Friday to let her know that you didn't, you weren't able to stay at your apartment and would be staying elsewhere? Yes, Misty and I had text and call conversations. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And you're saying that that happened on Friday? Yes, ma'am. What did Misty say when um, you told her that you wouldn't be staying there, but you'd be staying elsewhere? And it just, she said, I need, she said, I'm not going to say word for word because I do, I do not want to mislead. Um, she pretty much said, I need pictures of the kids, I need pictures of where you are staying, and I need the address. And then I will be there tomorrow morning to see the kids. And I said, okay, that's fine. I sent her the address, sent her pictures of the kids, just as she requested. Okay. And then the next day, yeah. she came over and saw the kids? Yes, ma'am, she did. Okay. So she didn't say, get the kids buckled up and take them back to the foster home? Correct. Okay. And so did you tell her where you were staying with the children? Yes, ma'am, I did. I gave her the exact address. But did you tell her who the people were? Yes, I did. And she had approved these people to help you transport the children bef before this day, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and she didn't say these people are only approved to transport. They're not approved to be around the children. Yes, ma'am. Did she say that? I'm, I'm sorry. She, she approved them to be around the children and transport. But when you told her that you were going to be staying at their home, did she say this isn't okay? They're not. Yeah. yeah okay. I, I, I don't know where she's going with this. She, they, they might have been approved, but I doubt, I doubt this person was aware of the throuple scenario. Supposed to be around the kids, except for no. transporting. Okay. She ended up saying that later, but on this day, on Friday, she did not tell you that, did she? Correct. Okay. And, did, and so you sent her pictures. What kind of pictures did she request and did you send her? I sent her pictures of each of the kids separately, I do believe, and then one of them together, already in their pajamas, bathed, everything. Um, I also sent her pictures of the home. Okay, and was the home safe and appropriate? In yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It was, she said it was dirty when really it was dishes in the sink and there were some, there was some dog hair on the floor and toys scattered everywhere. Okay. But I mean, it's lived in. Okay. Uh, did the kids have a safe, um, clean place to sleep on the couch? Yes, and they were with somebody that did. they did know. Who was it that they were with that they did know? Stephanie Hint, Hint, Hinton, I think. How, how, how did they know Stephanie Hinton? That is Lauren's sister. I, I'm sorry, but her, her description of uh, <laughs> the house makes it sound like it cracked into me. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> oh, she's like, yeah, yeah, it's great. And then describes it and everything about it is bad. Sister. And she but, met them 
she met all of them at the same time. When did she? Please, please, just speak one at a time. Sorry, Miss Miss Bird. If if Miss Fowler starts talking, you just stop so that we can hear Miss Fowler. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Jordan, how did they have the opportunity to meet these children if you were having visits under a safety plan where you weren't supposed to have other other people around them? Is Over it because they were chat. transporting? Okay. Say that again. Over video chat, and then they transported them once. Okay. And so it's your testimony that that the children slept on the couch with um, the sister to someone you're in a relationship with, and the kids felt comfortable because they knew her? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, do you feel like the kids were put in a dangerous situation being away from you sleeping on the couch? No, ma'am. We had the bedroom door open, and they knew exactly where I was, and they know they can come get me at any point in time. Okay. Well, I know somebody's going to ask you, so I'm going to go ahead and ask you. So you were in the bed with this couple that you're dating, and the bedroom door was open. Were you guys engaged in any sort of romantic play? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, and uh, do you think it's appropriate for your two young children to come and get you while you're in the bed with a couple that you're in a relationship with? We all sleep with clothes on, so yes, ma'am, and I sleep on the edge of the bed. Okay. And you understand that most people in this Zoom hearing probably – are not super familiar or um, comfortable with a polyamorous relationship. You're aware of that, right? Nailed yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, are you discreet with your children when you are around these people? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so there's not a whole lot of public display of affection going on or with your children around these people. Your Honor, Ms. Fowler, uh -huh. you're objected to leading questions, and I've let this go on for a while, but every single one of these questions is leading. I'll but, clean it up, Your Honor. I've given all of the attorneys a bit of leeway, but I will clean it up at for Thank you. Oh, she's got the worst job. I understand why she's leading because it's going he the, the, the attorney was absolutely correct. Uh, but she's trying to make this look okay. I, I mean and I don't know, the, the whole thing just repulses me personally. But like that's her job. That's what she's doing. And 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 like she doesn't seem particularly comfortable with it either, but she's trying to represent her and, and just make like this is a okay in front of the judge here. It's awkward. Okay, Jordan. Um, why aren't you working right now? I'm actually currently looking for a job. Um, I turned down that one job, like Miss Lane had said. Ms. I'm sure Lynn Lane had said because of the weekends, because I know that was my time with the kids and that could not be adjusted. Um, so. Hold on one second. So when you turned it down, you were under the impression that you would still be having weekend visits? I was preparing myself, yes. Okay. Why did you lose your last job? I quit going. I explained to them, hey, my car is starting to have problems. And it was too old and it was too much to fix it. And I was not going to be able to make the drive to Austin and back every day. So you no longer have a working vehicle, Miss Bird? Is that? I can use my girlfriend or my boyfriend's truck at any point in time that I need to to go back and forth to work. Okay, so you have access to a vehicle, but you don't have your car right now, correct? Correct. Okay. And why are you not in that Belton apartment that you were waiting for? Because of my mother's health issues, um, because of some things that have happened at her home recently, uh, like changes people-wise. Um, her boyfriend is no longer there, so now she works two jobs, and one of her jobs is construction. And I can't go with her on those construction jobs because I'm not an employee of hers. So... Why would I sit at home by myself when I can be around people that are going to support me and help me through my situation? Okay, where are you living right now? My mother's. And you heard Miss Sherilyn Lane testify that you were floating back and forth, and she basically said that she thinks that you're, you're living with Lauren and Richard. Um, are you living with them? No, I'm not living with them. I am here every now and then, and I've been here more since she's been working on the construction job more. Oh, okay, so she's living with them. Okay. Why didn't you take your, this is, I mean, your visits have stopped because of your decision to take the children to Lauren and Richards and uh, not some other place. Why did you decide to take them there and not some other place? I brought the children to this home because A, Lauren and Richard were already approved by CPS for transport. So obviously they felt that they were able to be around my children. And I've been in the home multiple times. And I know for a fact that they would never do anything to harm my children, and they do care about my children very, very much. They have very much expressed that. When we originally started the relationship, I did make it very clear that I do come as a package deal with my children. So if my children are not going to be treated fairly and as they should, then it would not happen. 
but ever since the relationship and I have been coming over here my, has started. This answer far exceeds the. They have never treated my kids any different, and they've always shown love to my children. So right. I felt in a safe stop, environment for stop, my children. Stop, stop, stop. Let's keep it on a tighter question and answer format. Next question, Ms. Ms. Fowler. Oh, yes, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Bird, do Lauren oh. and Richard have children of their own? They do. They have an 18-month, 17-month-old daughter. Okay, so around the same age as your children? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and... And there we are. There's your brave new world. They've set up with, uh, with multiple children and... Uh, All's well. I mean, this is what's going on. This this is the future. This is what we're doing. But nobody gets judged. So it's all good. It's all good. Uh, the uh, the traditional family is gone, and here is your replacement. I, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see how this rolls, but that's that's where society's headed. I'm frankly too old to deal with it. <laughs> my my suspicion is it doesn't end well, but. N nobody listens to uh to uh you know old attorneys the last issue was that um Sherilyn believes that you're being controlled by richard i think it was said submissive to dominant male um can you describe what it is that you were trying to communicate to Sherilyn about that issue with the court um the way our relationship works is we control our own actions we control who we talk to now in our relationship, you know, if one person feels that it is very uncomfortable for them to, or should I say, if they feel like somebody is toxic to the relationship and trying to damage it, then they will respectfully ask you, hey, can you please let the person know, or can you please just stop talking to them? And I do believe in a relationship, everything is equality. So I do believe everybody has their opinions. So it's I believe everything is equality, except I'm submissive. And we've we've got some BS safe word that nobody respects. <sighs> oh, make make it stop. Make it stop. It doesn't matter if it's Richard. It doesn't matter if it's Lauren. If they feel like somebody does not have good intentions, I'm going to cut them off. But ultimately, it's my decision. Who okay. I talk to. Okay. Um, and so do you feel like uh, Richard has an unhealthy um, control factor over you? No. Okay. I don't have any more questions. Right now. I pass away. Uh, Ms. Parker, and let's... Uh... Uh, limit it to four or five questions at the most and so zero in on what you want me to hear so we can move on yes your honor uh miss bird when did you meet laura and richard wait you're surprised i'm judgmental are, are you new to the channel <laughs> what, what what part of cranky old man if it haven't you seen yet <laughs> oh ruby um January, March, April. April of 2022. Okay. And how many times have they seen the children? They've seen them a total of three times, twice over video chat and then once in person. Okay. And isn't it true, ma'am, that when Miss Deeds got to Laura and Richard's house on Saturday, April 30th, there was a man sleeping on the couch. <laughs> Yes, he had went to sleep back there. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And isn't it true, ma'am, that outside Lauren Richards' house were an axe on the ground, canister of grass, and multiple empty beer bottles? No. Deborah, by the way, Deborah was trying to case and cast count it today. The, the feed was awful in terms of the audio and everything, but uh, she was she was going to town over there. I recommend it. It's probably too late now. You're probably done. I don't know. I haven't talked to you. That's all I have, Your Honor. Mr. Messer. Now, this case started in April of 21. We're now 15 months into the case almost. How in the world did you possibly think interjecting this couple that you're in a relationship with on a weekend visit with your children was going to help your cause? How did you possibly think that was going to be good? Can you restate the question, please? No, I cannot. Judge, I don't have any more questions. <clears throat> <laughs> I love that. I love that. He he doesn't care what the answer is in the first place. And you know, she asked him to restate it. Like, come, all right, we've got a life to lead. Carry on. Ms. Thompson. No questions, Your Honor. Ms. Crane. No questions. Ms. Fowler. Nothing, Your Honor. Just argument. All right. Um, Your Honor, I don't need a, a second. Um. A second you, argument. Yeah. I just wanted to ask the court to reinstate Miss um, Bird's visits. Um, she has chosen an alternative type of uh, relationship, <laughs> but you know it is her decision to make. And uh, we heard. 
It's her decision to make until she's drugged some minor children who don't have a choice into this nonsense. <sighs> all right, I won't, uh, whatever. No one listens to me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it's all super cool. No judgment. It's all unicorns and rainbows. Everybody do whatever you want and, and just, just hope the kids survive. From her and Miss Elaine that Richard and Lauren, the people whose home they stayed at when she didn't have any electric, ele electricity at her own home, um, were approved by the department. Yes, to transport, but I think the necessary step forward from that when you're in a situation where you can't stay at your own home would be that these people are okay to be around my children. And so that is the choice yeah. that um, Jordan made. She couldn't stay at her home. She went to Lauren and Richards. She let Misty know. Misty did not say, bring the kids back or no, you can't do this or you're going to lose your visit. She said, send me pictures of the kids and I'll be out to see the kids tomorrow. And she surely was out to see the kids the next but she took them and she has canceled her visits and her visits can now only be supervised at the department. You heard testimony that there was no harm to the children, um, that, you know, she doesn't have a car or a job or a home of her own right now, but she is living with her mother. Um, she can still have overnights at her mom's home, which is apparently where everybody thinks she should have gone in the first place. That is still available to her. And, um, I'm asking that you reinstate her visits as, um, her unsupervised overnights as there was no harm to the children and she did what she thought she needed to do and that was protective uh there may not have been harm although i don't know if that's true or not there may not have been harm on that particular evening that were that's in discussion but there will be harm if you continue down this path <sighs> it's not right i i i don't care what anyone else says i judge this I judge it, and I judge it harshly. Ms. Parker. Uh, Your Honor, I'd um, ask you to keep visits either supervised by the department or by Ms. Lane, the therapist. Ms. Lane has worked with Ms. Bird a yeah. year, and Ms. Lane came to court and testified that Jordan has regressed in that she's no longer where she was in April when she was allowed to have unsupervised overnights. So we'd ask that you follow the therapist's recommendations, which is Jordan should only get uh, supervised visits either by the therapist or by the department until she can get back to that peak and maintain that stability. Um, Yana and She's got to get back to the peak. The, the peak being acting like a normal person, so, at least part of the day. <laughs> By the way, Deborah, I sent – because all I can do from here is your email. So if you if you want to hop on, uh, I, 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 I would be interested in what your take on this is because you actually deal with these things. I don't. I just sit around and judge and harumph and, like, g give, give my eyebrow. And, and that's, like, a much, much milder version of what I'm actually thinking, okay? I'm 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 giving you one out of ten in an expression of of my true thoughts on this topic. When in the midst, there were multiple people at this house that hadn't been approved by the department. That doesn't sound like she even told the caseworker about. She definitely hasn't learned to be a protective parent or place the priority in protecting this over her children, over her selfish desire to have a relationship. That's been a problem for a year, and it doesn't seem like she's going to change anytime soon. And so I Thank you, ACA Parker, with that big pile of common sense. I ask you to keep the visits where they are until she can demonstrate to her therapist that she can understand these goals, protectiveness, and be stable enough for her children. Mr. Messer. Your Honor, I honestly don't even know what to say. I am just astounded by the behavior of this lady. These two children. All right, this, this, is the, uh, this is my favorite part. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. I, if, if I knew how to put it back a couple seconds, I would, but... Here's uh, the ad litem. Is he's my man? He he saved this for me. Children should be back with her by now. This case has been going on about fourteen or fifteen months. And right when we start getting to where we're getting there, she brings. See, I, I'm going to use Miss Fowler's word. She now is in a thruple. And not only does she choose to be in a thruple in the middle of a CPS case. I just love hearing that guy say thruple. If if I had some some skills with this, I'd, I'd put him him saying she's in a thruple on a loop and just I don't know. I'll probably play it every stream because it, it's it's Kim Blandino dancing kind of good. <laughs> and while I'm laughing at it, he's absolutely right. Toward the end of the case, when she takes these kids to their house rather than on her weekend to be with her children. Instead of her sleeping on the couch with her children, she leaves them on the couch with some stranger, and she's shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. Wait, let me reenact that. And she's shacked up on the bed in the thruple. <laughs> How 
did anyone keep a straight face on this? <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, he, he's my new hero. Period. I am shocked at everything I've heard today, and it's not the thruple. It's the mom choosing the thruple over her two children for her few hours of unsupervised contact that she had with her children. I've never heard of such a thing in 40 years of practicing law. That's all I have, Judge. Ms. Gustafson. No argument, Your Honor. Ms. Primer. Uh, Your Honor, just to point out that as of the last permanency, the goal was family reunification. It sounds like the department may be changing that goal. Um, however, if we're working towards family reunification, um, we would support Ms. Fowler's request to have the unsupervised reunification. Ms. Fowler. Nothing, Your Honor. Just to ask that um, the court disregard any issues with um, the type of relationship and concentrate on the fact that these two people were approved to be around the children. And Miss Bird was really in a pickle. She did not have a place to take her children on the She's weekend. She contacted trouble. CPS. They didn't indicate that it wasn't allowed uh, Wait, because I, these I, I two people have been approved by I the department. Um, I believe me. choosing the thruple over her two children <laughs> for her few hours of unsupervised contact that she had with her children. I've never heard of such a thing in 40 years of practicing law. That's all I have, Judge. Ms. Gustafson. I just need one more. No thought. argument, Your Honor. Ms. Primer. Uh, Your Honor, just to point out that as of the last permanency, the goal was family reunification. It sounds like the department may be changing that goal. Um, however, if we're working towards family reunification, um, we would support Ms. Fowler's request to have the unsupervised reunification. Ms. Fowler. I think, Your Honor, just to ask that um, the court disregard any issues with um, the type of relationship and concentrate on the fact that these two people were approved to be around the children. And Miss Bird was really in a pickle. She did not have a place to take her children on the weekend. She contacted CPS. They didn't indicate that it wasn't allowed uh, because these two people had been approved by the department. Um, I believe in a safety plan, um, a safety plan, she could uh, continue to have uh, overnight unsupervised visits and just being very clear who can and cannot be around these children. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ms. Parker, under the current orders, um, the uh, department as the uh, conservator can make the decision of who's doing the supervising at the moment, Ms. Lane. Thank you, Serenity, and I need Serenity now. Or the department, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So it seemed to be going pretty well that um, Miss Lane was being the supervisor for a time. So that remains a, a, a strong. It's cute how Debbie acts like she doesn't know this stuff. Possibility that uh, we could sort of transition back to Miss Lane from the department uh, being the supervisor. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. We could do that. All right. Well, I think Ms. Kramer brings up an interesting point that sort of begs the question of where the department's headed at this particular point. But, but based on what I've heard from Ms. Lane, uh, the, the relationship it said is, is the relationship is not, you know, the end all. This always gets back to be about judgment and the judgment calls and the priorities that the parent makes. Uh, so it seems like we've dropped back, um, or as I guess Ms. Lane put it, we've sort of roller coaster back down <laughs> into the valley. So um, based on everything I've heard in this hearing, the motion for the uh, further orders to go back unsupervised uh, are denied. I, I, I know we're, this case is sort of old. Um, so, but I think there's a chance that if she will work with Ms. Lane and, uh, and, and maybe Ms. Lane then can help the department determine what their position is going to be, you know, in the next six weeks or so. Um, because Ms. Lane still holds out hope. Um, so uh, if Ms. Lane holds out hope, then hopefully Ms. Bird will get back in there, will quit missing Thank appointments, you, and will start showing some accountability and start sorting out wow. which judgments are good for her children and which ones aren't. Uh, so the motion's denied. Well, there you have it. I mean... Y'all have probably never seen me so uh, so cranked up, but that that is absolutely despicable. Everyone just get mad at me. I know it's the new modern way, and we're all supposed to just think it's it's super cool. There are lots of things that we're supposed to accept that I don't. I'm sorry, I'm too old. I can't change. Okay.
I'm, I'm not doing it. If I, if I had the authority and I can't stand the state taking kids from people, I have a video on here in Texas with CPS not, not getting a kid out because they were too lazy to deal with it. I can't remember the name. I can't remember the title of that, but it was it was a good video. I don't I don't particularly trust them. The state isn't the answer either. But uh, this woman does not. Um, it's people say this is deserved. This woman does not want these children. She wants to engage in this deviant behavior. Yes, I said it. That's what she wants to do. If you don't have children involved, have at it. But you do. And it, 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 that she knows whether she agrees with it on a moral basis or not. She knows it will cause her problems. And she prior to, prioritizes that over her children. You know, people have made bad, bad decisions throughout history, but usually you end up uh, losing out as a result of that. And that's what should happen. They're, they're all bending over backwards to help her. And I, I mean, I don't mean to be mean to somebody, but I really think I, I, I she's just secondary to me. Get these children in a safe environment. I don't know if that's available. I don't know if that's available. I don't know if CPS is a safe environment necessarily. I know they're trying to, I, I, as a rule, or whatever. Some, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I also know there are a lot of people who want to um, adopt children that, that would love to take care of these children and would I, I enjoy having them. She sees these children as an impediment to her good times. That is clear to me. I mean, take... I, I'm not even sure if she isn't trying to get them taken, affirmatively trying to do that, while, of course, still playing the victim card and saying, oh, the state was mean and came and take my, took my kids. That's how obnoxious she's being in my thing. So go ahead. Tell me in the comments how old-fashioned, what a fuddy-duddy I am, and how out of it I am. Um uh, you know, and and these things are hard because we've thrown out any sense of morality in this civilization. And I'm not going to tell you what it should be, but we've thrown out all forms of traditional values, and th that makes it difficult because the 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 code the the law was not meant to do that. So if you take if you take all those things out in a vacuum and you can't judge anything, well, you're going to have a lot of things you're not comfortable with. And you're going to have to pretend to be comfortable with, and that's what the society we have currently is. I, I don't have all the answers, but I, I can tell you this. You know, I'm, I'm not the legislature. I'm not writing the laws. But this situation uh, repulses me. I don't, I don't have the answer, but I will tell you what my emotional reaction to it is. And that's what it is. So if... Uh, if that makes anybody uh, sad that I'm, I'm not the uh, open-minded person they think I am, I am not. I am not when it comes to things like that. I am absolutely not open to this lifestyle. I judge it, and I think less of people who engage in it. Plain and simple. Ah, there we go. There we go. There, there's the moral. Uh, there's the moral lecture from a guy who's got a naughty, uh, naughty adventure fund. It's an adult naughty adventure fund. Okay, <laughs> you see the distinction. <laughs> see how that works. Thank you, Jackie Joe. Don't change. Oh, you're sweet. Let me see here. I hope I didn't miss any super chats. I was watching carefully. Thank you all. I mean, even if even if it's a Tuesday night and I decide to rant about uh, polygamy, something that I've never done. By the way, I don't even think it's polygamy. I think this is polyamory because they're not claiming to be married. Although that's sort of that's sort of what they're forced into because you know polygamy is not legal in the state of Michigan. You know, so I, I think that they're de facto operating as a polygamous marriage. Or who even else knows? I. I mean, <sighs> Who knows what the contours of that are? I mean, th this is fairly recent. And I, and by the way, these things never work. At least the, the few that I've observed from a distance, they, they blow up in the obvious ways that you would suspect they do. But that's probably all because we're, we're too traditional and, and judgmental. And, and, and I'm sure someday they will, they will bring the, 
the the polygamous uh, uh, Valhalla to us all, and 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 will understand the way. I think I'll be long gone before that occurs, which is a blessing. <laughs> All right, thank you all for coming out. Let me wait, wait, let me check here, just to make sure I don't miss anybody. Because you guys, you guys are still chatting away, which is awesome. Thank you. I actually did. I actually did miss you guys. I had a really fun uh, time with Rob. Who I I don't know. It's, probably a lot of you saw, but maybe a lot of you didn't. Uh, Rob from Lawn Lumber came to Chicago, and we had we had a fun stream in my office, packed into my office. Rob and I, and then we went out and you know had had a few cocktails and a good time. That was really fun. And then I and then I got. Then I was reacting to these Amber Heard things, so I, I just haven't been on here to just uh, to, to just be able to chill with the chat uh, for a few days. And honest to God, I missed it. So thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. I um, I, I think I probably lost my um, my uh, polyamorous uh, audience tonight. <laughs> Oh, Lord. All right. Have a good night. I will see you all soon.